Hello everyone. One of my viewers had suggested that I do a video where I have a chat with you and discuss things that I like, things that inspire me, and my influences. And I thought this was a fantastic idea. So today I've decided to talk about style in the context of interiors and exteriors and architecture. And to keep me going, I have brought my cup along. We're not going to be having English breakfast tea today. I'm actually having a latte. Very good, very good. I'm very fond of sugar and sweets and cakes and chocolate. And it might come as a surprise to some of you because I consider myself to be sweet enough. I don't tend to have favorites. I do tend to think it's quite uh, uh, limiting, but I definitely have favorites when it comes to dessert. My favorite dessert of all time is the Scottish Brodie's chocolates. I think style and interiors, whether it's in a personal residence, in a home, in a building, whether that's a hospital or a school or a, a post office or whatever the building, even a, a filling station. I don't know what they call them in, in internationally, where the places where you go and put fuel in your car. I don't know what the correct term would be in other parts of the world, wherever you might be, but everywhere, any building. I think these things and where we are, we are sentient creatures. We are influenced by our surroundings. Human beings, we are, we are influenced by what we see. It influences how we feel, how we act, how we behave. And I think the greater, the better, the more well thought through, the more decorated, the more decadent a space is, whether it is a personal residence, whether it is just a utilitarian building, or whether it is a state building, the higher its quality and design, the better. I think that we all have different desires in life. Many of us are made happy by different things. And happiness is, of course, something that comes and goes. We're not all happy all the time. All of us are experiencing life. Same thing for loved ones or love itself. It comes and it goes and that's the way it is. But a strong, solid, safe, secure home is something that I think all people need. It's not just something that I think a lot of us want, definitely. We all, majority of us would want that. But it is something that in the kind of world we live in, it is something we need. It is also a natural need. And I think if you look at the animal kingdom, there are many, many different types of animals that create a safe home for themselves and aim to keep it as safe as possible. So it is a very natural thing and a very natural need. I'm very influenced by my surroundings. I'm very particular about the things that are around me and things in my home and um, in general, I'm quite particular. I have a very clear view of what I want, a very clear view of what I need, what I want to do, how I want things to appear, how I want to appear. I know exactly what I want. That's the kind of person I am. But um, when it comes to style, I wouldn't say I have favorite styles. There are definitely styles that I appreciate more than others. And there are definitely styles that I think were fantastic, but I wouldn't necessarily want to have them or live around them. And style is one of these things that you see it in all parts of the world, whether it's in ancient Egypt or ancient Rome or the Aztec civilization or in the Far East. There are so many different styles to be found everywhere throughout all over history. But one of the most recent styles, which is of a bygone age, and it is one of my most favorite styles, would have to be the Art Nouveau period. And many people find this fascinating when I tell them that Art Nouveau is one of my most favorite styles. They always presume that I'd be interested in the Art Deco style because it is very masculine, it's very streamlined, there's a lot of line, there's a lot of symmetry. And I do appreciate Art Deco style tremendously. It's, it is something that I would say is an acquired taste but just some of the ideas and some of the things that were done during the Art Deco period and things that were done in that style I thought were so innovative and so fantastic and have remained timeless. That's what I love about the Art Deco style and the Art Nouveau period is that a lot of the things that were created and done were timeless. They aren't necessarily things that are dated. They are very embellished and I think things that are embellished or um, excessive do tend to age or be associated with an age more so than something that is minimalist or modern. And we consider minimalism to be modern because of the era that we live in where minimalism is sort of the most modern, newest thing. But I think that a lot of the styles that you see nowadays lack what I consider to be human. And it might sound a little strange, but what I mean is that a lot of these traditional styles when you look at old tables, just an old fashioned table from the Victorian period, a carpenter had to make that totally by hand. All the little flowers, all the little engravings, all this, all this work was put into just one leg. There was no electricity. There was no machinery to do these things. It was all done by hand. 
and they went from leg to leg to leg to leg on a table and they went from table to table to table to even more products where it had to be done in such a way and the craftsmanship and just the, the understanding of the material I find that fascinating and invigorating. I'm, I'm fascinated by skill and I'm fascinated by an understanding and passions and I myself since becoming a furniture designer and carpenter I find the process of it just I love to build I love to make things, I love to create things. And I also find that when I'm able to actualize a vision or an idea that I've had, I find that very fulfilling. I think I'd have to say that's what I live for, is actualizing the things that are in my head. Speaking personally, I would have to say that being able to actualize the visions that are inside my head or the ideas that I have, regardless of what they are about, being able to actualize them, that's what I feel I'm alive for and that's certainly what makes me feel alive. Coming back to what I said about the home and how important I think it is to have a strong, safe, secure, private home, I think that's something that all human beings desire and at least need, regardless of desire. I have always said this and I've always believed it, that a strong, safe, secure, private home, a great home, a great space, is a fundamental right. Regardless, regardless, it is a right. Our surrounds do influence us. A home is also a very personal representation of who you are. You can reflect who you are within your home. You can create a space that's reflective of who you are, what you stand for, what you believe, what you like, what you don't like. Your personality, your character, your being can be seen within your home very much. I think when you see somebody's home, it can give you a great clue in regards to what kind of person they are because you are being allowed into their private space, into their home, so you do get quite a good grasp on what kind of person a person is just by looking at their home. One of my favorite periods was the Art Nouveau period. I also loved the Age of Elegance, which was the Edwardian era. One of the most famous representations of that style, of course, was the film Titanic. It encapsulated that era, I think, very well. And of course, the styles varied from country to country. All throughout Europe, there were different styles. If you were to look at styles within the Georgian era, they were very different to the sorts of styles that you would see in France at the similar time, or in Sweden, or even in the Far East. Styles change, and people have different things wherever they are in the world. And I think that's what's very important about style, is that we don't give enough credit to what we've been able to actually accomplish as human beings. Just the beauty of what we've been able to accomplish. The pyramids of Egypt are one of the most fascinating structures in the world. And I think that we must always give ourselves credit as beings, just to be alive and just to be able to think, I have this idea, we're going to make it happen. I think that is a marvellous thing. I really do. I find the use of line and symmetry and how things align, very, very important. I particularly like styles where that is very apparent, where symmetry and just how things align with one another. That I really admire. But I think in today's world, definitely when it comes to style of interiors and architecture, a lot of it's done by machine, a lot of it's concrete, it's not stone, it's not wood. A lot of the woods are not carved by carpenters, a lot of the stone is, well, stone isn't really used as commonly anymore, but a lot of the stone is not carved by masons. So a lot of what made our structures very human, I think has been lost. And it's sad in a sense, but I do believe that all things die for a reason and they come in in another way. So I think this, the era that we're in just now is just a passing moment. And I think people will get tired of modernism and minimalism and simplisticism or just things being quite simple. Personally, I don't really find things that are more minimal and simple as uh, inspiring to the mind or as fantastic. I like things that are slick and elegant but have essence to them. I like things that have essence. And it's not just, style isn't just about putting up a pretty painting on the wall. I think style is also about, when it comes to interiors and style, I don't separate parts of a whole. I think it's all useful. I can't, I can't look at art in the ways that a lot of people do. I can't just go into a gallery and walk around a room and think, I, I, I view art as being part of a home, as being part of our existence rather than separating it down. I can't, uh, I can't separate art from 
uh, my reality or look at it concisely. I look at art and think, where would that look good? How will that look there? Whether it's a, an abstract painting or an abstract sculpture or whatever, I always think, uh, how will it function in what I'm creating or what I'm doing? It's very important and it has an effect on you. It does have an effect on you. What you're seeing, what you're hearing, what you're doing, it affects you. And certainly in a home, I think that just by sometimes making a few little changes, what a difference it makes by just changing the colour of the curtains or just changing a lamp or putting up a mirror in a certain space that was a little dark. So it can really make a fundamental difference. So I don't necessarily separate things. I think about things in the whole scale of things. I think when you contrast the Art Nouveau and the Art Deco style, Art Nouveau was more feminine. It was inspired a lot by nature. There's still a tremendous use of line. Both styles have a great attention to line and the flow of lines. Art Nouveau style, I would say it's more feminine as it has more flow to it. The lines are longer, they flow. And of course, the way women were depicted in Art Nouveau styling was a celebration of their femininity, of their curvature, of their long lines, of their hair, of their beauty. Art Deco style, of course, came after the First World War and it was very much new, it was fresh, it was sharp, it was clean, streamlined. It was very modern for the time that it was in. Style, of course, is influenced by the affairs of the time. When you look at the sorts of styles prior to the First World War, compared to styles after the First World War, they were very different. Of course, there was a lot of social changes happening during that period as well. So I think styles are very reflective of what's going on in the world, which is, of course, fascinating. I think ultimately with style and architecture, regardless of what you are trying to achieve or what you're doing, I tend to be more favorable of styles that enhance our existence, that reflect our highest selves, our highest ambitions, our highest ideas. I also tend to be more favorable to classic styles. Lines are very important to me. I like lines, I like columns, I like structure, whether it's in a face or in a piece of clothing or in a piece of furniture. I like things that have structure or lines. And definitely in classic styles, I do tend to find that there is more lines, there's more shape. It's not as simplistic or simple. A lot of these styles from periods bygone, they were the vision and they were the imagination of one person or many people who had to go to great lengths to actualize their vision. I think when we look at history, as far back as the ancient Egyptians, up until styles that uh, started to go out of fashion during the mid 20th century, you do tend to find a lot with a lot of these styles and a lot of these designs and a lot of the architecture, whether it was a lot of the crockery, a lot of the furnishings, a lot of the homes, a lot of the buildings, everything, all these different periods and different styles, the technology that was available to all these people, I think we can consider it to be less advanced. Yet the styles that they created in comparison to the styles that are on the market today were far more richer were far more decadent, were far more elegant, and far more representative of our aspirations as human beings. That's probably why I'm more favorable of older styles or styles from bygone ages. I am a bit of an old soul, though all my friends say that I'm this old creature from the past. I just think a lot of these styles were more representative of what made us human. I think too much of any style, though, can look quite jarring. I think every style is great, but just refining it, just refining it a little bit, and you get something that's just more out of it. So I've shared with you today my views and my ideas and my thoughts on style and interiors and architecture, and of course, how they're relevant to making us human and how they are very human. I hope you have found today's film either insightful or interesting. And once again, thank you so much for watching. And of course, take care. Bye.